Hello, I want to talk about barking dogs. Now, I wanted to also include in this barking dog video some other things that you might not first think are important. But if we're, put it this way, if we're wanting to divert our dog away from barking, then the behaviours that we're diverting our dog towards and away from barking are the ones that we want to reinforce and reward and say yes to our dog. When I say when I say say yes to our dog, I mean tell them yes, that's a lovely behaviour. That's what I'm wanting to, you to do. Whether that might be sitting on your mat, being calm, just standing there looking at you, or just sitting at the front door and not being uh, reactive in an impulsive way to anything going past. Now there are a lot of reasons for dogs to bark. Of course, alert barking is one of them, but this day and age, and for so many reasons, particularly our lifestyles and the way we're actually shoehorning dogs into you know, our different types of accommodation, whether that be a flat, an apartment, a house, um, if our dogs are exposed to a lot of stimuli going past and they don't have anything else to keep them occupied, mentally occupied in a productive way, then barking can be a go-to behaviour. And barking can be a rewarding, a self-rewarding behaviour because if we think about barking in an alert type of um, scenario, then that dog is performing an instinctive behaviour and um, any success that that dog sees with respect to a potential or a perceived threat increasing the distance away from where they are, um, irrespective of whether they were just walking past the, the house anyway and <laughs> going to increase the distance away from the dog and the house. Um, from the dog's point of view, that's a, a successful strategy and that is going to be a rewarding one from the dog's point of view. Now, if our dog doesn't have anything to do and is stimulated by a lot of things going past the house, our dog might also be looking and scanning um, the environment for things to be stimulated and to chase or to bark or just to be, um, just to have their attention uh, directed towards or focused on that particular stimuli or trigger. And when these sorts of situations happen, and it's so very, very common, that can be difficult to retrain or divert that self-rewarding behaviour because it's a go-to behaviour, it's the, it's the behaviour that the dog goes to um, in order to fulfil a motivation, to fulfil a desire, to fulfil a need. Um, and when that has been performed, say, three or four, five, six, seven times a day, seven times a week, we've got 50 times a week, we've got 250 times a month, we've got thousands of times if we measured that over a year. So I wanted to go over some footage today um, of a couple of, couple of dogs, but one in particular, the older dog. Um, he has a history of barking and having bouts of energy where he likes to um, sit on the veranda and then he'll be stimulated or indeed sitting on the lounge when the humans are home to run out to the stimulus, which might be something going past or some noises or voices or anything you like going past or anything that actually triggers um, this dog to... Um, or alerts this dog in any way. So, and this dog has been doing this for about a year. So, let's have a look at this footage. So the first footage, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to start in a very quiet place without too many distractions. And I, I, want, to, I want to reiterate here that all the behaviours that I'm marking with my clicker and rewarding this dog for are behaviours that aren't barking. And this dog will be learning to perform calm behaviour in different situations. Now that we have a puppy, we've got a puppy in the background here, Millie, and um, she's a lovely little puppy. Now she's very excited here, so it's very difficult for her. And look, every training session isn't perfect. I'm using a clicker in the vicinity of two dogs here, but look, we have to do this because, you know, this little puppy is being, um, is getting very excited and of course, she wants to join in with what's happening here, but is unable to. So the, the human is trying to keep her busy and engaged, but that's difficult. Now, let's turn our attention to the little doggy in the harness. And I'm just rewarding him for sitting there in this nice, quiet environment. And I'm asking him to follow my hand. And Bailey's paying some nice attention to me. That's really good. 
Now he's he's a very his personality seems to be very um, not not so alert, responsive, or um, energetic as you might find a cattle dog, say, um, or, or for example, Morty's natural disposition. So you have to go with what your dog's giving you and understand their personality, their confidence level and those sorts of things. Now I'm trying to just reinforce calm behaviour and we're moving to the moving off camera now because Millie's just getting a little bit um, excited and I'd like her to be able to focus on her human who, who is trying to do um, an important job of keeping her occupied while I'm occupied with Bailey. Now fast forward and we're going to come back into shot so this is all in an effort to help Bailey to reduce his barking, but what I'm doing is I'm rewarding him for other behaviours that um, we take for granted. Just standing there quietly, paying attention, giving me some focus, which is really nice. And you can see he's a little bit more engaged in the training session now. Now Millie's getting a little bit more excited, so I'm just gonna walk over and scatter some treats down there for her. And that's nice, Bailey's just looking at Millie, I've asked him to come back to me. Just a nice little training session, just practicing in a nice familiar environment. We're going to move on to other environments that are more distracting. And once again, just getting Bailey to follow my hand. I'm just trying to mix things up a little bit as well, just doing a name response, just saying his name and then rewarding him, bridging and rewarding him for that. But he's following me really nicely and look, Millie was in no position to want to sit because she was so excited. So of course, that's something that you should take into account. And um, it wasn't going to be, you know, her arousal levels weren't going to be compatible with trying to get her to sit in that circumstance. So uh, scattering some more treats for her. So what we were doing in that little session was just starting off rewarding Bailey for some calm behavior and just being in a nice quiet environment. Now, the second lot of footage is moving on to an area that is still secluded, but it's a balcony off to one side of the house. And it does have quite a heavy stimulus at the bottom of the stairs, and we'll see that later on. So once again, now we've got Millie out here because we can't expect Millie to be engaged in a quiet activity. It just wasn't, wasn't conducive for her to do that. So she's out here with us. And look, you just have to make do and work with what you've got. And so I wanted to include Millie, even though I'm using a clicker and it's best that we use a clicker with one dog at a time. But look, I'm trying to do the best that I can and actually reward Millie um, as well as Bailey when I'm using the clicker in this instance. Things like this happen, you just work with what you have and make the best of it. There's no right or wrong, there's more optimal <laughs> and less optimal, but in this case, no harm's done. So on this balcony, you can see this is a, ni this is a nice, nice balcony here. And what I'm doing is just getting the dogs to be nice and calm and to focus on me and just to do some basic requests. And we've got Millie doing a wonderful, wonderful sits here. She's very responsive. She's a lot more responsive than Bailey. But um, that's fine, and Millie may have a more outgoing personality than Bailey has. But in this situation, um, both dogs are really responding nicely, and we're just we're, uh, I'm just rewarding them for calm behaviour, and there's no barking happening, but we're doing it in phases. We're doing it in um, environments that have minimal distractions and slowly working our way up. Now... I'm just pausing here and then you'll hear the clicker again. I'm just trying to lengthen out the time between pressing the clicker and rewarding or bridging that behaviour, marking that behaviour, bridging and rewarding. Um, but I don't want to leave it too long because I want the dogs to um, not to be confused. So just in small increments, I'm increasing the duration of their focus on me, if you like. Just giving them a finished cue. So what we're going to do now is we're going to venture down the stairs and I want you just to focus, just you'll see a red arrow and you can see this is this is a bit exposed here but watch out for the red arrow right there, there's a chicken coop right there and you can see that this backyard is really exposed, we've got sort of um, wire fencing and we can see through to the other properties and also through to the streets um, on either side. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, and Bailey has a history of being stimulated and triggered by things at the fence. So he can see down towards the road 
uh, that runs parallel to the back, backyard, um, part, just in front of the house behind them. And so he runs to that fence and he's very motivated to bark um, when he's down in that corner of the yard. So as you can see, I'm rewarding both of the dogs for just standing there, being nice and quiet, nice and calm. And I'm using that shed as a barrier. That's really good where we use physical barriers just to gradually inch our way um, towards places of more distractions and then we can ease ourselves back to areas of less distractions and physical barriers are a fantastic thing to use. So that's something that does that is underutilised as well. Now here Bailey's focused on the chicken coop so I'm just giving him some time. He's not reacting but I will actually bridge or mark that behaviour and reward him right here because he actually sat and he was sniffing the air. And that's really lovely behaviour because he, while he was focused on that chicken coop, he wasn't, re he wasn't reacting in an impulsive way. And just to divert Millie, I just scattered some treats there for her because I'm trying to keep my eye on uh, Bailey mostly because this is who I'm wanting to, want, want, uh, Bailey's the one I'm needing to work with, but I don't want to frustrate Millie by, um, putting all of my attention onto Bailey and sometimes um, you know that can that can get missed and certainly with Millie she's very responsive and I don't want her to feel frustrated in, in any way if I'm not responding to her um, as well. Now you can, you'll see that Bailey has just a little bit of a stalk there because he's really focused on the um, on the chicken coop but I'm still just bridging and rewarding the calm behaviour and we haven't had any barking and what we're going to do now I'm going to ask uh, the human to just move my camera up here and we're going to try to ask Bailey to come up the stairs. Now we got him this far which is fine and what I'm saying now is just that we can't get him up any further so let's actually go back down the stairs and try again and that's what I do. So we actually go back down, increase the distance away from the chicken coop and we then repeat the process again. And I'm taking my time. I'm not trying to rush this process. And you'll see that Bailey has another sniff. And when he starts sniffing, I don't just, you know, pull his lead and say, no, come with me, come on, because this is valuable behaviour. His nose is to the ground. Millie's doing very well. She's sitting really nicely. Her nose is to the ground now. But this is what I'm explaining to the human now, is that this is wonderful behaviour. We don't want to hurry the dogs back inside when they're performing this lovely behaviour. And we should actually um, okay. be reminded that sniffing and foraging behaviour like this lowers our dog's heart rate, lowers our dog's sympathetic nervous system, which also lowers stress hormones like cortisol, and also promotes a more emotionally satisfying experience for them. So now we're going to try to venture our... Uh, we're going to try to venture back towards uh, the house and up the stairs. Um, but I'm just, it looks like I'm just going to continue. Just increasing the distance. There may, be, may have been a reason for that, but that's fine. This is all valuable because every second that the dogs are down here not barking, not being distracted by anything on the fence line, is an association for the dogs um, that they can then draw on in the future when they're in this situation. And if the human is always trying to uh, promote this sort of behaviour, isn't that lovely behaviour from Millie, just plonking down there, very relaxed? If we consistently promote this sort of behaviour then and make things interesting in the backyard, we're going to take the interest away from the perimeter where other distractions are. That can take time and especially if a dog has a barking behaviour and this here, just need to come back. I'm going to take the, the leash off here and we're going to actually ask Bailey to come in on a, of his own accord. And he did so and we give him a nice praise. Now this, these sorts of situations, when we have our dogs coming back into us, that's when we really have the rewards and the praise for them. This is when we really do want to highlight how great that behaviour is. Because when we also are able to work on our dog's recall, then that means the other part of trying to divert their attention away from a trigger such as wanting to bark at something, 
it means that we've already worked on a, a portion of our strategy and we're doing that in, in steps, if you like. So that's really important that we're always rewarding a dog for coming back to us. And if it takes 30 seconds, and it might have take us, taken us about 15 to 20 seconds just to wait for Bailey to get whatever he needed to get out of his system and then feel like, yes, he's okay, he feels that he can make the choice to then come upstairs with us. And if we're hurrying downstairs with our dogs we ha and we want them to, you know, we're taking them out for a, for a walk, or we walk so they can do their wheeze or their poos, and we don't want to tempt any situations where during that time, that short period of time, uh, our dogs might be stimulated by something and then perform that barking behaviour, you know, that's, that's, a, that, that's warranted, that's a, that's a reasonable thing to think. But we don't want to actually hurry our dogs because if they enjoy being out in the backyard then and you're trying to hurry them inside, then your ability to get your dog to come to you is going to be less successful because in that situation you're creating frustration between your dog wanting to spend time um, which may be doing something productive and you, as you saw, doing pr something productive was having the nose to the ground and just doing a, a kibble scatter is, is fine and is enough to get your dog's nose to the ground and can be enough for them to be distracted while you can then get them to, you know, um, have a, a nice real-world opportunity or a training session in that particular area and then um, coax them back up or, uh, you know, ask them to come back up after you've you finished. But once you're consistently doing that and you're spending a few minutes doing that at random times of the day, you'll find that you'll actually see results and you'll see your dog's response to you and um, their ability to focus on you and want to focus on you occurs much more readily. Now the final footage is on the... is it a part of the house that was problematic? And this is because it's very exposed and it's also because this is where most of the barking happens. And of course, that can be a routine or a ritual for our dogs, depending on how enjoyable it is for them or how easy it is for the opportunity to arise for our dogs to be able to bark in that situation. Now what I'm doing here, once again, I'm just rewarding both of the dogs for nice calm behavior. Bailey's approached me, which is really nice, and just rewarding him. And it would be nice if we could actually put some physical barriers up on this balcony in the form of some pot plants, something like that. What I'm doing here is I'm using myself as a physical barrier in this instance. Um, now you'll see the little gap in the fence, that's where Bailey likes to jump up and lean in um, to that area where he can get a really good vantage point of things going past and that's where he does uh, most of his barking. So when our dogs are already in that stage of barking, it's difficult to try to get their attention. So um, that's why doing this in phases just rewarding calm behaviour at the most quiet times of the day. Rewarding calm behaviour in the form of just rewarding Bailey for sitting. And here, Millie's just standing. Um, rewarding Bailey for looking at something in the, in the front yard or, or across the street. Rewarding that, bridging and rewarding that. Because he hasn't actually responded. He's acknowledged it, but he's still sitting down on his bed, which is really nice. And just continuing this, this doesn't look like much. It looks very repetitive, but every time Bailey is sitting here nice and quietly is another association and another memory from his point of view that he'll have that is pleasant, that he was sitting here able to enjoy sitting on his mat and he was being rewarded for that. So we're creating pleasant outcomes and pleasant associations with this environment, which usually is a source for being stimulated or motivated to want to approach the gate and bark. Now, Bailey's just had a little bit of a, a yawn there, so he may be feeling a little bit of tension in this situation. He may just um, be feeling a little bit conflicted. He's just turned his head to look at something there, but he hasn't barked, which is great. But he will actually let out a small rough... I think in the next part of the footage, which I, which I do reward as well, because I was wanting to see what he was going to do. 
And you will have noticed that previously there was a couple of cars going past and so I would wait for that car to approach and then um, use my clicker and reward Bailey um, so he would associate that noise going past with something pleasant. And there he goes. So this is Bailey's response when he's on this balcony. So this is his usual routine, if you like, on, on this part of the on this at this part of the house. Now this is really good because he when I called his name, he that was enough to interrupt him, but he wouldn't take the treat. So this is and he's continuing to bark, that's okay. Just need to let him just get a few barks out of his system. And I'm gonna to try to interrupt him again. And there I was able to interrupt him. Would he take a treat? Yeah, he may not have taken a treat from me then at that time. So this is a cue to me to say, let's finish this training session because this is enough. This is a really high, this is, this is a positive note because I was able to distract him and interrupt him from that behavior. And so we're gonna to try to ask him to come inside. Now, will I be successful? Halfway, he came to the door, he's looking, that's fine. Now with Millie, Millie came in, so that was a great opportunity for me to not only verbally praise her, but also give her something nice. Now, I'm out of camera here, but what I'm doing is I'm just explaining to the human that what we'll do is we'll just keep moving in phases, just trying to inch Bailey back in using our follow the hand technique. Um, now, because he's not barking anymore and his arousal levels have come down slightly, that's good. If we're not not successful, then that's absolute. Then it's absolutely fine to just gently and calmly pick Bailey up and just quietly move inside the house, and then pop some treats on the ground, and just pop pop him down on the ground, and just leave it at that. Um, the difficulty arises um, is that sometimes when when you're trying to interrupt your dog, and they're still barking, that energy um, can be redirected back to you in a way that's um, in a frustrated or possibly aggressive way. So our dogs can actually redirect that frustration if you're trying to move too quickly, move too fast, and you just trying to pick them up and move them away because you want them to stop barking. That can startle your dog as well if you do that. So we weren't successful in asking Bailey to come all the way back into the house. He did get just to the front door. He then turned and walked back towards the stimulus. He didn't start barking again though, which is really good. So this is where we start building on things. So today we got this far. Tomorrow or at a different time of the day, um, we might actually get a little bit further. It all depends on how many times um, we're reinforcing calm behavior in this situation and how we're anticipating when things might happen as well. Sometimes we can't anticipate things and our dogs hear things before we do. So then we just have to try to work in phases um, in helping our dogs to be successful in small measures. And it doesn't mean that they have to get everything right. Like Bailey didn't have to come all the way in. If he actually did get all the way inside, that would have been fantastic. But because it's a behavior that he goes to and he does very regularly, it's too much to ask and expect him to actually come back inside the house um, while he's still being motivated to want to respond to the trigger that was across the road. What I wanted to highlight from these videos is that although we were trying to train Bailey to um, be calm in these situations and not be motivated to bark, a dog's motivation can be very difficult if they're very good at that behavior and they've had lots of opportunities to practice that behavior as um, in this case. Also, we have to look at the environment, very exposed area. So having physical barriers is going to be very helpful. Also having the highest value treats and saving those highest value treats for specifically for those training sessions where we're in the red zones or the hot spots, if you like, um, to keep our dog's motivation um, as high as possible when we're doing short training sessions. Now, the other thing is to always see the little successes. Now the successes that I saw, many, many, many successful things were happening in, in, that, um, in those training sessions, not just for Bailey, but for both dogs. And every opportunity that 
the dogs were being rewarded for having their nose to the ground, even just looking or giving me some attention and some focus, following the hand um, target, also um, standing quietly, even just looking at a trigger but not responding to it, sitting, sniffing the air, all of those sorts of things are wonderful behaviours that our dogs should be rewarded for and should actually know or be shown by us that they are indeed beautiful behaviours and desirable behaviours. So every time we get a chance to reinforce and reward those behaviours um, that aren't actually causing us any frustration or judgement or blame, example barking, example jumping up on us, example um, pulling on the leash, when we reinforce and reward our dogs for those behaviours that don't get our attention, then that's when the behaviours that do get our attention are a lot more readily diverted or recalled back to something that we can then reward our dogs for. So I just want you to see the value in rewarding behaviours that you take for granted every day, which is, or which is all of those behaviours that I mentioned previously, with both, where we saw both dogs on leash, sniffing, sitting, looking, um, not reacting, um, and if you can consistently do reward your dog every day for those behaviours and reward them for those behaviours in different parts of the house, different parts of the backyard, where there are more distractions, um, and build on it from there, then you're not only going to change your dog's emotional state, you're also going to change your emotional state because you're in a position where you're rewarding your dog for something that you find desirable. And when your emotional state is a positive one, then that means you're connected to your dog and you're also... Um, you're also living the mindset of having empathy and compassion and you're also feeling joy and happiness as a result of your dog performing desirable behaviours. So I just want you to take into account how at first glance rewarding behaviours that don't get your attention can be and are so vital in helping you when you're trying to recall your dog or divert your dog away from behaviours that are getting your attention and, get, and those that are getting your attention because you don't like them. So I hope you enjoyed the videos and uh, we'll talk again soon.